Hey guys, I'm going to roll right into part three of the meal planning series. And last time we stopped with uh, talking about the pre and post workout meal as the most important time of the day for food and different strategies for whether that's in the morning and you're coming out of bed, got to get some food in before you hit the gym, or if it's later in the day. So uh, make sure you catch up on that if you uh, missed it. The uh, second highest priority for me is what I call an anchor meal, which is where you have a solid food you know, whole food meal with, with protein, fibrous carb, starchy carb, really essentially your biggest meal of the day. So even if you are on a pretty strict diet, your calorie calorie base is restricted uh, enough to where it's a little bit painful, you're, you're looking for the most bang for your buck with food, I really think you need one meal a day that really fills you up. It's going to be kind of a stopgap for anabolism. It's going to help your metabolic rate. It's almost like a... Uh, a relaxed meal or a high carb day, but you get that small boost every day. Obviously, it's not that big, but it, it helps. And uh, that way you can have some gaps. One of the things when it comes to meal timing that a lot of people don't understand is some people, especially with a slow metabolism, have to go a, a pretty good stretch of time between meals. That's why intermittent fasting actually has some credibility. And I'm not a fan of going all the way down to two meals a day, but some people who eat just three meals a day do quite well. And I think if you're not training, uh, that can be something that you might find you like. You get a much bigger meal. You can go four, five, or six hours without eating. And you just almost feel human again if you've been dieting really hard. Uh, now, when you throw in some training, uh, I think you really need to step it up to four or five meals a day because you're just going to be hungrier. And you got to count that before and after or pre and post workout meal as a, a pretty serious time of the day. T to me, it's the highest priority. So um, if you do that, where you're going in kind of an intermittent fasting status, or you're at least going four, five, six hours a day between two meals, even if you're not doing that all the time, uh, you really don't have to worry about catabolism if you're getting enough protein throughout the day. And remember, you're always thinking about what you did at your last meal, as well as what you're going to do at your next meal. So if your last meal was that big, big enough so you're not hungry for four or five hours, I guarantee, as I said in the last video, that amino acids are still uh, being pumped into your GI or through your GI system and your blood system uh, bloodstream for up to six hours. You know, studies show that with heavier molecular weight proteins. So everything's gonna be fine. Uh, you can even sip on a little branch chain amino acid drink if you really think uh, it wouldn't be, but it, it really would be great, and I think you'd like that. I think. It's one of the things I see with clients who are struggling to lose weight. Sometimes without even changing the amount of food we're eating, all we have to do is change our meal formatting and give them more time between meals and they start losing. I know for me that's essential. I have to have enough space between meals or regardless how little I'm eating, it's just going to be a lot harder to lose. So we've got that anchor meal scheduled somewhere throughout the day. We've got your pre and post workout meal. The other meals, as I said, could be just uh, protein and fiber, could be protein alone. I mean, I don't know if you guys just slam a protein shake, just a scoop of protein, you powder water, and you're done. Some people might grab a chicken breast and eat nothing on it, just eat that. Um, that's again, if you're leaning toward ketogenic dieting, that might be necessary for you at, at one or two meals a day, and that's actually fine. You know, you're, you're getting what you need from a protein standpoint, and yet you're still keeping that accelerated body fat burning going. Uh, again, you guys know, I hope that I'm not a huge ketogenic fan, but based on calorie needs, some people have to go that low. I'm gonna do a video on that uh, after this one, because I had a, had a good strong request on that. Always a lot of things to talk about. But for right now, with uh, the rest of your, your, your meals, I, I call just a, a protein and a starch, kind of a core meal. If you look at our book, 50 Days to Your Best Life, we name those meals kind of based on their function. And a core meal is just that, just starch and protein, just kind of filling in those gaps between what you might do with your pre and post workout meal and your anchor meal. So some other strategies or other contexts. Uh, as part of this uh, question, one, one person asked, what about when you aren't dieting? How do you prioritize your food? So. Uh, obviously, you're going to have more carbs. You know, protein is probably going to stay about the same. Sometimes protein will even come down a little bit. Uh, carbohydrates being more anabolic. When you have your minimum protein needs met, 
more protein is not anabolic, but more carbs are anabolic. So that's where you, you want to make sure you've got your protein needs met, but when you go higher than that, you're really missing out on the opportunity to get more carbs, which will help your metabolism much more and help uh, stimulate an anabolic environment for muscle growth and recovery. So the good news is when you are uh, in an off season or you're just trying to maintain weight, you've been gain weight, you obviously have a lot more food to, to play with. And I remember I was just talking to uh, my son at lunch and uh, we were going through a couple things. Um, some of his classmates were asking him, he was a senior in high school, and he remembered when I intentionally got up to 200 pounds and I was, it was right before I actually won my pro card and I took two years and, and that was a lot of work because you're just eating around the clock, especially somebody uh, on a smaller frame, 200 pounds. I was grossly obese for my taste. I just felt miserable, but that was my job and I was going to get it done. And you're just quite literally eating around the clock. Every two or three hours, it's just another whole meal. I remember uh, driving to college. I commuted. It was about an hour away. And I would have a can of tuna fish, you know, 20 years ago, that's what a lot of us did. And it would be like two cups of rice, a cup of peas, this can of tuna fish. I've got this Tupperware thing this big and I'm just, you know, I still feel full when I'm eating my next meal. And of course that helped me gain the weight I wanted. Obviously you don't have to eat that much if your goal is not weight gain, but you really don't have an issue with timing. You're, you're going to still have a good pre-workout meal, but if you have that massive gut load that stunts your sympathetic nervous system and stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system, now all of a sudden you've got this you know huge gut full of food and you're in the gym and all the blood flow in your body is going to your organs instead of your muscle tissue. So you still, even if you're uh, not trying to lose weight, you gotta, you gotta make sure that that pre-workout meal is not just adequate, but it's appropriate. So then your post-workout meal is where you can go to town. You know, if you're trying to gain weight or at least at least gain muscle, let's, let's say you're not even trying to gain weight, but you just you're, you're maintaining, you're in an off season, and you just want the best recovery without fat gain, you can still hit that post workout meal hard, because like I said, pre workout food nutrition is your primary um, goal or, or emphasis. Your second would be post workout. And instead of being skimpy with your carbs there because you still want that workout calorie extension, calorie burning extension into the next couple hours, you don't have to worry about that if you're not trying to lose weight. So that's where you can dump tons of carbs in and have the best anabolic cycle possible through, uh, through that training session. So that's where you would definitely want to dump a lot of carbs post-workout. Then it's a matter of just being sequential throughout the day. So wherever your meals are, again, you could have a little bit fewer meals, uh, infrequent, and so you're doing not what I would call intermittent fasting, but heading that direction, and uh, that'd be fine. You know, you have a little bit larger meal, but a little more time in between, or you could space it out. But because you have enough carbohydrates in your diet that day, or during that cycle of your dieting, you're, you're not going to have to worry about being catabolic. So. That, that's that scenario for uh, trying to gain muscle or weight, uh, muscle without weight, or just, just you don't care. You might be like I was in that off season where you're trying to gain weight, period. And um, to, to finish this segment, I will say that there are times when that's important. I've, I've written about this several times in my career, and a lot of people try and stay really ultra lean for a long time and staying really close to the metabolic set point. And that can really impede your ability to hit your maximum genetic potential for muscle mass. So there are times in your life where you have to say, well, it's, it's going to be okay to let my body fat percentage get up to 15% if I'm a guy or 20, you know, 22% if I'm a female. And, uh, you know, when you look at you know, how muscle growth occurs, you know, mass and force, you look at all those physics equations, um, you, you just, the, the muscle mass you have definitely helps you with that potential gain, although there's a law of diminishing returns. The more body fat you're gaining, you're gonna see less and less muscle, but it's still there, and that potential might be the right call for you at certain points of your career. But we'll wrap it up there, and like I said, I'm gonna do another um, series right now on uh, ketogenic dieting. So, uh, hope you guys check that one out. Thanks.